Hi guys, it's Rob from Royal Balls. In the last video short that I did, we looked at the black-eyed leucistic complex and today, by popular request, we're going to look at fire versus vanilla in both non-clowns and clowns. So with the help of ARP, uh, we're going to look at what each of those genes does, how to identify it and how it's best used. I enjoyed making this one, so let's hope that you enjoy watching it. It is a little bit long. So, courtesy of ARP, this is the base morph Vanilla, and uh, when I received this footage I was actually quite surprised at how similar Vanilla looks to Fire. Um, this is a particularly nice example of Vanilla. It still has the soft, creamy look uh, that distinguishes it from Fire, which is much crisper and sharper, and the head stamp is a little bit different. But this is a particularly nice Vanilla, hence it's still in the ARP collection. This is a breeder female. Um, not all vanillas look quite as nice as this one. You would be forgiven for thinking that uh, some vanillas are nothing more than just a slightly brighter or creamier normal. Um, this is a particularly nice one so don't be fooled. Okay so let's start off with our base morph fire. This is actually a fire het lavender so perhaps cheating a little bit. Uh, but it will serve the purpose. You can see immediately that fire is a very strong pattern influencer. We have a very reduced pattern along the dorsal. It's crisp and clean and much brighter than a normal would be. So very, very different to a normal. Fire is a colour enhancer, a contrast enhancer and a pattern reducer. We can tell fire from Enchi, which is also banded, because you can see the bands don't actually extend all the way down the sides of the animal, and we still have some very strong horizontal elements, particularly in the lower third of the animal, where we can see all the alien heads are amalgamated, and we have a very strong dorsal stripe. If I can just disturb this girl a little bit to show you the head stamp. Let me see if I can... Get that up to the camera. So we have a very strongly triangulated head stamp. Um, it's very arrowhead shaped, which is very distinctive in fire. We're going to see that again in a lot of the fire variations. And you can also see it's slightly blushed with a little dot in the middle. Not to be confused, of course, with leopard or many of the other head stamps that have a dot or a donut. Uh, fire is very, very distinctive. So this is our base morph fire, and the thing to remember with fire versus vanilla, which is also a colour enhancer, is that fire influences the pattern very strongly. Vanilla tends not to. So how good is that if you want a gene that enhances the colour and changes the pattern? We can use fire. If you want a gene that just enhances the colour and leaves the pattern as it is, we can use vanilla. So there's our base morph fire and we're going to add pastel. So this is firefly. This is the exact same morph but just with pastel added. You can see the distinctive head stamp, the arrow shape, the very strong V head shape but it's now more blushed because we have pastel and you can see the pattern is distinctly fire. So by adding pastel to fire we still get a very strong fire pattern. Notice that the donut here in the dorsal uh, this is very strongly indicative also of fire but we get the same banded pattern we get the same horizontal elements here still with fire 
and we also get exactly the same strong dorsal and amalgamated alien heads at the tail end of the snake. So again, fire is the dominating pattern enhancer in this combination. We've added pastel and we've just made the animal brighter. And this guy is in shed typically, but this is a super fly. So we've added two doses of pastel. The pattern is slightly more reduced. The arrowhead head stamp is very, very distinct. We still have the same banded pattern, but it's even more reduced because we've now got two doses of pastel. We still get the same donuts on the dorsal. We still get the same horizontal and vertical banding elements. And we still get exactly the same amalgamation of the alien heads in the lower third of the tail. So this is super fly. And again, fire is dominating the pattern. Fire is a very strong pattern influencer. Seems like when you want to film, everything is in shed. This is pastel vanilla. And the thing to notice here is that this snake retains the pastel pattern. This is pastel with vanilla in it. So we get the soft, creamy, yellow colors of vanilla, but we're not changing the pastel pattern. We get a color enhancement, but we don't affect the, the pattern. If anything, it makes the pattern much more neater and more regular than a normal pastel would be. Uh, this snake is huffing, it's very uncomfortable, it's in shed, its eyes are in blue. And you can see from the head stamp that we have a lot more blushing than we would have with just pastel. Pastel doesn't give this blushing. When you have pastel and vanilla together, you get a very creamy coloured head stamp. So this is a typical vanilla head stamp. This is a typical pastel vanilla. And let's co just contrast that with a straight pastel that does not have vanilla in it. So this is pastel without vanilla in it. And you can see that the yellows are much, much starker yellow, much higher contrast. And the vanilla version has more regular alien heads. The, uh, the vanilla has influenced that to some degree, but you can see that the color is much, much creamier. So vanilla is not affecting the pattern very much. If anything, it's improving the look of the pattern, making it more regular but it is giving a soft, creamy color, and it is giving a very distinct head stamp. The, the normal pastel without vanilla looks quite harsh in contrast to the pastel vanilla. This is perhaps a much better contrast that we could make. This is pastel fire and pastel vanilla. And you can see that pastel fire looks like a fire. Pastel vanilla looks like a pastel. You can clearly see the colour differences. Uh, pastel is enhancing the colour of both of these snakes. Clearly this is fire and this looks like pastel but a softer version of pastel. So this is pastel vanilla. You see the creamy head stamp. This is super pastel vanilla and again the thing to note here is the soft creamy colour but the super pastel pattern is pretty much unchanged. All we've done is add a soft creamy colour to a super pastel pattern. If I can get this girl to show you a head stamp, very reluctant to show her head. Okay, this is classic super pastel vanilla with a carved from marble head stamp Super Pastel would not be quite as white as this. Super Pastel with vanilla gives it that very marbly look. And let's contrast this snake, Super Pastel Vanilla, with Super Pastel, something that doesn't have vanilla in it. Here again you can see the contrast and you can see what vanilla does. This is Super Pastel without vanilla. Look at the head stamp, nowhere near as blushed as the one that does have vanilla in it. Uh, but you can see that the pattern is almost identical. So Super Pastel without vanilla and Super Pastel with vanilla. All we've done is softened and made very creamy the colour. We haven't changed the pattern. The head stamp tells us which one is which. It's very easy to distinguish the vanilla from 
the one that does not have vanilla. So here we have Super Pastel Vanilla and we have Super Pastel. That's the difference between the two. As we go through this identification of fire versus vanilla, the distinguishing feature in most of these morphs is that fire is the pattern influencer and vanilla is not. Let me contrast this Super Pastel Vanilla for you with the Super Pastel Fire that we looked at earlier that is in Shed. This one is obviously Fire. This one looks just like a Super Pastel. Fire is a very very strong pattern influencer whereas Vanilla is not. I'm going to show you another example of what Vanilla does. This is a this is a Pastel Leopard. This is actually a double het Desert Ghost Clown. Look at the head stamp and you will see that it is a little bit blushed from the pastel but let's add vanilla to this combo so this is pastel leopard and wham oh look at that this is pastel vanilla leopard and again you can see that vanilla has not changed the pattern all it's done is made this animal creamier and brighter than the non-vanilla counterpart and you can see the difference in head stamps that's the vanilla uh, with the pastel is coming through with a much much whiter head stamp so by adding vanilla to this combination you can see that what we've done is made the animal glow in the dark compared to its non-vanilla counterpart I think that's an awesome illustration of just what vanilla could do we could do the same thing with fire adding fire to this combination here would also make the animal as bright as this one but by doing that we would change the pattern you would not get the leopard pattern showing through anywhere near as strongly the fire would be a much stronger influence on the leopard pattern than vanilla is so that's the beauty of vanilla we can use vanilla to enhance the colour without necessarily changing the pattern. Now I think this is the bit that many of you have been waiting for and that's what fire and vanilla does in clown. So this is a straight clown. You will see it is actually quite a nice clown but it's a typical clown with those nice clown like teardrops down the side and Typical clown head stamp, not that distinctive. So what would we expect if we added vanilla to this combination? Well, here you go, vanilla clown. You can see immediately the difference in the colour. Uh, but the difference in the pattern is minimal. This is still very obviously a clown. So again, we've got that creamy, soft colour from vanilla but we haven't done much to change the pattern. If we have a look at the head stamp, the head stamp on this girl is very distinctive. You see the soft arrowhead shape at the back of the head. That's a very characteristic of vanilla in clown. You will see that again many times over. Uh, a light creamy banding at the back of the head is typical vanilla. As opposed to our fire clown. Immediately you can see the difference in both pattern and colour. Fire has had a very strong influence on the pattern. We've amalgamated all of those alien heads. We've put in a very strong dorsal stripe including the donuts that we've seen before in fire. And the head stamp on clown with fire is no longer an arrowhead. What we get is like a helmet shape at the back of the head. The very distinctive and high contrast ears here on each side and again as we go through this you're going to see this type of head stamp with fire many times over. It's very high contrast and has very sharp edging to it as opposed to just the banding, the soft banding that vanilla has. So vanilla would not have these high contrast outlines to the head stamp. Fire gives it this very broad characteristic helmet or ears to the head stamp. So this is a straight clown and a fire clown and you can see immediately fire is a pattern reducer and fire is also a colour and contrast 
enhancer. So let's just have a look at fire and vanilla next to each other. A fire clown and the vanilla clown. The head stamps are quite distinct, the colour is quite distinct and fire is the much much stronger pattern influencer over vanilla. So those are the two side by side and I couldn't possibly showcase fire in clown without showing my firefly enchi clown so we've got fire and enchi and you can see the influence of enchi in the pattern but again fire is what's giving this really nice high contrast and clean sides so fire and enchi are working together in this combination and it's obviously pastel to brighten the whole animal up the head stamp you will see because of the pastel we've completely lost the normal head stamp there's no belly pattern at all we've lost all the belly pattern but both fire and enchi are working together to give this very very crisp clean high contrast firefly enchi clown now if i was to add vanilla to this that would soften up the whole animal and give it a much much creamier colour and we would lose the crispness in the dorsal. So this is an example of what fire can do for you that vanilla cannot. This crisp, clean, high contrast look is from the fire rather than vanilla. And the final animal that I want to show you here is actually a pastel vanilla clown and it is an extremely bright high contrast animal compared to what a normal pastel vanilla clown would look like we can tell it's pastel vanilla because if we look at the head stamp you can see that we've lost the pastel head stamp and we've just got left with the white from the pastel vanilla so this is clearly pastel vanilla it's not a firefly clown because we wouldn't have that white head stamp with a firefly clown we would still have the fire type head stamp now the keyholes in the alien heads on a vanilla are often extended like this one is here and very jagged and broken that's also characteristic of vanilla or pastel vanilla whereas fire would be much more regular so I'm keeping this girl because it is a superb example of pastel vanilla let me just put her back in a tub to keep trying to keep her still for a while so this is pastel vanilla and the reason that I'm keeping her is because her mum this is mum who looks like she's going in to shed let me see if I can show you the head so again we have the same pastel vanilla head stamp that whitish head stamp but you can see the soft vanilla cream color down the side but she is nowhere near as high a contrast as her daughter her daughter looks like she's an even better example of pastel vanilla you can see in mum that it is actually a pastel clown pattern with the creamy vanilla colour which is what you would expect from vanilla we change the colour but we don't change the pattern and let me show you how important that could be this is a yellow belly spot nose clown don't worry we're going to look at these in more detail in a subsequent video uh, this is the straight yellow belly spot nose clown it does not have vanilla and you can see that this is where the Pompeii magic happens you can see all that awesome flaming and blushing along the edges of this snake and we wouldn't want to change that but what could we add to it that would not change the pattern of the snake but make it brighter we can add vanilla look how much brighter this second snake is than its sibling much much lighter dorsal much brighter oranges and you can see that the head stamp is also 
lighter in colour as well and the back of the head in particular is much much lighter with vanilla. So two snakes, yellow belly spot nose clown, one with and one without vanilla and I think the difference is obvious. Not in the pattern of course, we haven't done anything to change the pattern but we've significantly enhanced the colour. Okay, I keep remembering other combos that I need to show uh, to showcase both vanilla and fire and we're going to introduce another gene from a different complex. This is the yellow belly gene, uh, a vital ingredient to many of my projects and you'll see why here. This is yellow belly vanilla, het for clown and it looks like a yellow belly on steroids. You can see the head stamp there with the dot, typical vanilla head stamp. If I can just disturb this girl, uh, she is Het for Clown and she is going to be the potential mother of my next attempt at Vanilla Scream Clowns. She's been paired to my Firefly NG male clown and if I can just show you briefly Look at the flaming on the sides of this girl and the awesome yellow belly, speckled yellowish tint to the belly here. So this is yellow belly on steroids, this is yellow belly vanilla. So let's take this one step further and you'll see how vanilla and yellow belly interact very very strongly. This guy here is a pastel vanilla yellow belly and the intensity of colour on this guy is quite extraordinary. You can see that we have the soft creamy colour of vanilla, we have the intense flaming of yellow belly, we have the yellow belly speckled edges to the belly and we know that this is pastel vanilla rather than just pastel because of the very very blushed head stamp. So here we have pastel vanilla yellow belly and it's the intensity of colour that vanilla and yellow belly together bring especially when mixed with pastel that gives this extraordinary look. So here is that awesome pastel vanilla clown what happens when we add yellow belly? Well, something really extraordinary happens. Instead of making the whole animal more yellow, all we do is fill in these alien heads and we leave the dorsal stripe pretty much untouched. I know this girl is pastel vanilla from the head stamp. You can see the head stamp is white and only pastel vanilla does that, but we get a very creamy interaction in the dorsal. The dorsal is not quite the same colour as this but you can see the intensity of the yellow and how high contrast the alien heads are in this pastel vanilla yellow belly. How do I know it's pastel vanilla yellow belly? Well you always start with the parents, you work out what the theoretical combinations are. This is obviously pastel vanilla and the only thing that could be in this snake from this particular clutch was spot nose and yellow belly and it obviously is not spot nose but the intensity of colour over this straight pastel vanilla underneath it can only come from yellow belly. That is an example of how pastel vanilla and yellow belly work together we'll come back and revisit this combination when we look at the spot nose clown clutch in more detail in a later video. But that's an example of bringing in a gene from another 
complex. These are not a lelic. Yellow belly and vanilla is not a lelic. But what you can be certain of is that if this combination pastel vanilla yellow belly works with vanilla, you can be absolutely certain that you, it's going to work with fire. And in actual fact, you'll notice from some of the videos I did over at ARP that we were trying for the fire version of Iron Man. He also carries a yellow belly and we were trying for that interaction but we missed out so there's more to come with Iron Man. If we can get the fire version of Iron Man we should be able to bring out some of this colour intensity that we see in this pastel vanilla yellow belly clown. Okay guys so this two are the exact same combo with the only difference being vanilla and fire they're pastel enchi mojave clowns one with vanilla and one with fire uh, he's in a bit of shed just point out the mojave head stamp because people have asked about that that's like a pastel head stamp but much stronger with the with the v behind as well so that's uh, typical uh, mojave yeah but on this is a little bit hard to see because it is a few margins the other in it. clearer that's Still mostly NG and a little bit of Mojave head stamp there. But you can actually see the whole body colour of it. The Mojaves just make clowns go very creamy. Clowns don't really get that creamy colour, but with the Mojave it gets very creamy and clean. So pastel enchi Mojave fire clown. Yeah. Pastel enchi Mojave vanilla clown. Yes, correct. So as you can see they're quite different actually. Even though fire and vanilla works quite similar. In this combo, you can see it's quite different. The one with the vanilla is a lot more brighter, a lot more pale and white actually. And the one with fire, yeah, a lot more softer. And the one with the fire has actually a cleaner pattern and slightly more contrast. There's still more color on it. Sharper. Yeah. When it's not in shed. Mm. Yeah, it, it, it is a bit in shed. It's a bit diamond pattern at the back. Yes, that's typical Mojave. Okay, so we'll show you guys a couple of other snakes that are non clowns so it may be easier to see so again same combo the only difference being fire and vanilla these two are head clowns they are leopard enchi od yellow belly head clowns one with fire one with vanilla as you can see suddenly the difference is huge they look like totally a different snake So I think the Enchi amplifies the difference between fire and uh, vanilla and also the OD further amplifies the difference. As you can see again, the vanilla has less color in it, a lot more softer and the uh, one with the fire still retains a lot of its color. It's actually quite orange this night. You just focus in on the head stumps because the head stumps are quite different as well. The vanilla has got that yeah. broad bar behind the back of the head there. Yeah, the vanilla has a bit more of that dent in the middle also plus the little dimple down the back whereas the fire is a, is an arrow uh, but head. Th this thing at the back sometimes is different from snake to snake i've noticed that also but is this this dent part here yes it's that broad. yeah same like you see the shirt has that that trident head because of the vanilla influence also And let's not forget that fire and vanilla are a lelic and one of the reasons that I highlighted this complex is actually the allelic interaction between fire and vanilla and this is a vanilla scream or pastel fire vanilla produced by ARP constrictors. What an awesome snake. This is why I love working with allelic complexes not so much because you don't get any normals when you breed them but the allelic interaction between the two genes is just so impressive Now I'm going to leave you with this clip right at the end. Um, this is another example of fire and vanilla in clown. 
and I leave it to you to decide whether this is a fire clown or whether this is a vanilla clown. Remember I said that vanilla doesn't affect the pattern very much but clown is an extraordinary gene and in many cases polymorphic variation has reduced pattern clowns popping up out of nowhere. Uh, many people will say blade clown, enchi clown, they're not, they're just reduced pattern clowns and in this case this reduced pattern clown looks very very different to the standard vanilla clown that I showed you. It looks much more like the reduced pattern fire clown. Remember that fire reduces the pattern in clown and brings out a very strong dorsal. And I'm not 100% sure what this snake is. So you tell me, what's your best guess at what this second snake here is? The one underneath is clearly a fire clown. That's the one that we looked at earlier. But is the one above a vanilla clown or a fire clown? You tell me. So I hope you enjoyed that guys. For those of you that haven't had enough, um, we're going to see vanilla again when we look at my double het Desert Ghost Clown projects and also we're going to have an in-depth look at my Spot Nose Clown project and where we're going with both of those projects and what you can expect in the future. It does showcase and feature vanilla quite strongly so stand by for those if you haven't had enough vanilla. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.